Hello and welcome to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Formant here with another country guide, probably of one of my favorite countries in the game. I don't know why, I just really like them. Saxony. Um, Saxony is a moderate sized country in the HRE. I think in terms of development, they're either like 6th or 7th. Obviously they're behind Austria, Bohemia, Bavaria. I believe they're also behind Pomerania and Brandenburg. Um, but they are about the same size as Brandenburg to make really no difference. Saxony, of course, starts in the HRE, as I've mentioned, surrounded by lots of potential enemies and allies. In fact, you might have some of the larger diplomatic options to you in the game at the beginning of it. So, first off, Saxony starts as a one of the elector um, dukes, essentially, of the HRE, which means you can automatically vote for yourself. You don't have to worry about trying to get other votes. Or you can try and throw your support behind somebody that's not Austria. Um, it's kind of a cool mechanic. If you're going to do it for HRE, obviously, you probably want to pass the first reform, maybe even the second reform. But Saxony has some of the more interesting ideas in the game. And in all honesty, I really enjoy them. They're definitely not a super military powerhouse. Neither are they entirely useless. Their stats are more for late game development, diplomacy, and tolerance. Seeing as they start out with 10% cheaper development costs and 10% advisor costs, both are really awesome. Um, it allows you to get, obviously, more monarch points and develop your lands. I managed in one game where I was playing as a peaceful Saxony, which is entirely doable since you're going to expand through diplomacy if you do it that way. I managed to get each of these provinces up to about 25 development by 1470. Um, so I had about 125 to 150 development. Obviously, Saxony was higher, or Sachin Saxony was higher. So your other ideas, you have one of the best in the game, if you're going to play Diplomacy, Albertine and Ernestine lines, plus 50% chance of new air. Not the biggest problem in the world, but it means that if you don't have an air, it's not really a big problem for you, unlike every other country in the game, except for Austria. Put it mildly, Saxony is Austria's weaker cousin uh, in terms of diplomacy and, you know, personal unions, inheritances. Next up, you've got Messiner Porcelain, plus 10% goods produce modifier, which is really nice to Saxony. In fact, there is an achievement for Saxony called uh, Messin... Uh, I'm probably saying it wrong, my apologies. Messin Portland, uh, Porcelain, which is as Saxony own or have a subject to own all Chinaware producing... Uh, provinces in the world. Obviously, there are no Chinaware production prov uh, provinces in Europe. You're going to have to go all the way to China and pretty much conquer it to get a hold of that, which means this is one of the harder achievements in the game, especially as Saxony, who doesn't start as a great power or a large nation to begin with. They really need to work on expanding first before they can actually conquer anything outside of the HRE. Next, you have a nice one, the Zwinger, plus one diplomatic reputation. It's nice. It honestly should be in keeping with their other ideas. Probably plus two diplomatic reputation, seeing as that other countries like, I believe, Hess start out with one at level one. They get a free diplomatic reputation. But it comes in handy if you play a diplomatic Saxony. Again, better chance of getting electors to vote for you. Better increases of your elective of the elector monarchy support heir in Poland, better chance of getting your dynasty on other people's thrones, getting personal unions, deals, etc, etc, etc. If you play a diplomatic Saxony, this will be one of your key points to try and hit early on uh, to get alliances. Next one, uh, Wittenberg University, famed for hosting and protecting Martin Luther, gives you plus three tolerance of heretics. Which is rather nice. It means pretty much whether you convert to Catholic, stay as Catholic, or you convert to Protestantism, Protestantism, and you take Declaration of Indulgence as a Catholic, you will be completely tolerant of both um, all ca all Christian faiths. Which is rather handy considering Germany tends to you know have three competing religions at the same time. The next one is Corpus Evangelicorum. I think I actually said that right. Uh, essentially gives you plus one diplomatic relations. This is really nice. Um, 
there aren't many countries that get plus diplomatic relations and um, plus diplomatic reputation. It's really nice. Uh, essentially means it allows you to have more allies, which are really useful. The principal line plus 10% tax modifier, pretty basic, but does help you to make a lot of money from your provinces if you don't grow that large. The Saxon circle plus 5% discipline is kind of handy. And completing the Saxon ideas plus one yearly prestige. Now, I know most people don't like prestige that much, but if you play diplomatic Saxony, that idea or that ambition essentially is really key to how you play Saxony. It sounds really stupid, but Saxony, a lot of the game, you have to concern yourself with prestige if you want to play a diplomatic one. Same thing if you play Austria. A little bit less for Austria because they automatically are Emperor of the HRE and get the resulting prestige from that. But as Saxony, you don't have that. When I play diplomatic Saxony, prestige is usually one of the larger issues to juggle with. So overall, Saxony's ideas pretty much manage most of your internal stability, heirs, alliances without much issue, which means if you want to play warmongery Saxony, you'll still be able to do some diplomacy but if you want to go really diplomatic you can almost be as good as austria you'll never be as good as austria because they have an idea that gives them i think plus three diplomatic reputation but as a human player you can either easily overcome an ai doing that and of course in multiplayer all bets are off so what should one do as saxony starting out first of all you have no unique missions as saxony which kind of sucks um, the only thing you do have is a unique national decision, which I believe is just mainly for you, Brandenburg, and Pomerania, although it could be for technically for all of the uh, Saxon culture group area, but I could be wrong. So essentially everyone here, which allows you to form, reform in this case, into Prussia, which means if you do play a warmongery Saxon, me, that you can actually get and turn into Prussia, which of course Prussia is the best military government in the game, bar none, in terms of military bonuses, um, which is really strong. Obviously, the plus three military monarch skill is huge. Um, it actually stacks nicely with Saxony's uh, development cost, but you're going to want to take the Prussian ideas because they're that much better than the Saxon ideas. Plus, if you got that large, you're probably fighting lots of enemies anyway. So after several runs of this, I can safely say that Saxony has a very diverse pool of rivals. Um, usually either Brandenburg or Bohemia is one of your rivals. I've never yet been rivaled by Austria, which means trying to get an alliance with Austria straight off the bat is probably your best opening move. Uh, even if you're going peaceful or uh, diplomatic or even warmongery. Uh, just because being allied to the Emperor obviously makes it less likely they will attack you if you expand to take land in the HRE. So it really helps in that sense. Um, so one of the safest rivals for you to pick is, of course, the Teutonic Order. They, of course, are usually to get killed by Poland or later by Denmark. Um, especially with the new missions, Denmark tends to invade this area a lot. Um, and they tend to die, but it does give you that extra power projection in the meantime, which is always good. Plus you can safely embargo them without any penalty for another power projection. Uh, Bavaria is usually another one of your rivals. In fact, it's seemingly one of the more consistent ones. And they're fairly safe to rival, seeing as they're down south and they've got either Bohemia, which they're not gonna beat, the Palatinate, Nuremberg and Ansbach, and then Würzburg to expand to. So they're a reasonable distance apart. It is worth noting that Bavaria does have a fairly strong army for the HRE, which you don't, so it's if they're on the other side, it is worth being a little bit wary of. If you can get it, a alliance royal marriage with Bohemia, especially a Bohemia that's not rivaled to Austria, is about as ideal as you can get. The odds are when the dynasty comes to replace the Interregum, or um, that your dynasty will be on the throne. Obviously, seeing as it's Bohemia, you'll be overthrown by Podebrand at some point. But there's always a chance your dynasty will either keep the throne or get it back from them. Plus, Bohemia is, outside of Austria, the strongest country in the HRE with Silesia and stuff. They tend to make a very good defensive and offensive ally, because unlike Austria, they're not emperor, so they can actually be called to arms against other members of the HRE. 
Um, now for one of the harder ones, Brandenburg. I found Brandenburg sometimes isn't your rival. If it's not Brandenburg, it's usually Brunswick. That's usually one of the two. Um, seeing the other one then is a fairly good ally for you. Um, to be honest, taking Brandenburg's lands early on is fairly good, especially if you're going to form Prussia, because it puts you up in this region. It's worth noting that Brandenburg earlier on is stronger than you, but if you call in Bohemia, you can easily beat them and usually one or two of their allies. They tend to not have lots of good allies. Of course, late game, they get really strong, so if you're going to kill them, kill them early. Otherwise, uh, be allies with them. If you are allies, they will help you a fair amount. They tend to focus on this area of the HRE, which leaves you free to try and conquer the middle area. Another nation that can be pretty good is the Platinate down here. Um, they tend to be willing to royal marriage virtually with anyone within the HRE. Um, another one of your, your semi-diplomatic rivals in the area, but they don't tend to be a huge threat. In fact, they usually tend to die, but uh, not a bad ally. In terms of conquest, obviously if you're either rival Brunswick or Brandenburg, conquering the other one is a key point. In fact, Brunswick's territory um, right here of Brunswick, uh, whatever that is in German, is a pretty good province to conquer. It's got a reasonably high development for this region of the AHRE. In fact, they've got two fairly good development provinces. You've got one of the better ones as well, but the rest of your land is pretty poor development. And it's also annoyingly woods. That means developing it is somewhat difficult. Luckily, you get that wonderful negative 10% development from Saxon traditions, which means it's a little bit more expensive for you to develop. But if one takes an edict, if one has the ability to and does encourage development, all of a sudden developing this land becomes 5% cheaper than normal. Normal's a bit odd because all the provinces pretty much exchange it except for grassland. Um, but it's 5% cheaper than grassland, which means developing this land can be doable. Obviously, the hills make it a little harder to develop. Uh, oh yes, before I forget, you do tend to start with a very high nobility controlled base, which means it might be worth early on revoking one of the provinces from the nobility, seeing as it's very easy to get an event that gets the estate close to 80 influence. Um, Luckily, the clergy and the burghers don't control land, which makes it a lot easier on you. Um, so the other province that's country that's worth conquering is uh, Würzburg down here. Uh, you tend to get uh, claims on them, their provinces, through random events a lot. It might just be me, but I seem to always get claims on Bamberg or Würzburg. Um, they usually don't tend to have lots of allies. They are a theocracy, though, so they don't really tend to have good allies, cause of lack of royal marriages. And their land down here is, gra is one of theirs is grassland, which means if you want to play a developed Saxony, this is a very key province to take. One of the few grassland provinces in the area. In fact, it's the only one outside of Bohemia's lands you border. Um, taking it and developing it with your 10% development is really nice, plus it gets you closer to the central farmlands in the HRE. Uh, Hessen over here, I never seem to be able to conquer them early on. Might just be me, but they tend to have good allies. So that plus one diplomatic reputation doing its work for them. Um, in terms of expansion, I do recommend you mothball fort and spend some initial points developing your lands, specifically your capital because you're a rather poor country and it'd be nice if you're fighting a war to be able to at least afford a level one morale or discipline advisor when war comes. Sadly, you have one of the worst rulers in the game when it comes to military skill. Um, in fact, you don't tend to have that great airs early on in Saxony. Kind of sad. Um, you do have a 215 heir who's pretty good at military, but obviously he's young. He might not end up taking the throne, or he might. But your current ruler with a 7 is not bad at diplomacy or admin. In terms of ideas, though, using that initial starting boost to admin and diplomacy, thinking diplomatic ideas for diplomatic relations. If you're going a diplomatic, Saxony is a good route. If you're going a warmongery, Saxony, uh, obviously military ideas might be good. But the other one that you can consider is influence ideas for the prestige, chance of new air, 
Diplomatic annexation and more importantly the reduced aggressive expansion cost can help Saxony expand in the HRE, expand by like vassalizing someone like Anna Holt or Magburg, who tend to both be fairly good allies to you, and uh, thus expanding your land that way. Uh, for your second idea, uh, you can kind of do either a diplomatic or military idea if you didn't do it first, but I like to take economic ideas, race down to the end and either get the 20% development cost, or go down innovative and snag the negative 25% advisor costs which stacks nicely with your 10% for 35%, meaning if you play a tall Saxony, you can usually afford level two advisors without really expanding outside of Saxony itself, which is rather impressive. It also means level three advisors are manageable as a medium size control this part of the HRE empire, unlike a lot of other countries in the area. Let's see, what else should we go over? Oh yes. Uh, disputed succession, uh, just run down if you don't know how to do that, uh, you probably do, but you want to find countries that have lack an heir. This nice little pop-up tab here is wonderful. Find somebody who's rather old, for example, in this case, the oldest one on the list is Anna Holt, who is 54 years old and with four prestige and has no heir. So if one were two, let's just tick forward a day. There we go. Royal marriage with them. There is a chance that upon their death, if he's 54, he's got a good chance of dying, personal union with Saxony. Um, once you get more prestige and diplomatic reputation, single province countries like Anaholt <clears throat> will be simply annexed by you. Another country that tends to not have an ally heir at some point is uh, Lautenberg up here. I don't know why, but this heir tends to die and they end up left with a 59-year-old uh, ruler. Um, other than that, uh, it's important not to go for Milan because they'll get their event to turn into a republic. Lithuania and Poland tend to disappear from the map. Uh, Austria and Hungary will always have heirs. England's going to be in War of the Roses. Um, that's pretty much it. Obviously, that's a bit more of an advanced technique, um, unions and uh, inheritances, but it's quite possible to do with Saxony. Uh, later on... Uh, the nice discipline comes in if you wait. <clears throat> excuse me. If you wait a while, um, defensive ideas is not terribly bad for the morale. Um, some people will argue quantity because you're a small populated country, but if you develop your lands, if you play it right, you shouldn't have too much trouble with manpower. Offensive ideas can be kind of nice having the better uh, leaders, larger army in the Aishiri, but I tend to wait on both quality and uh, quantity, quality, and offensive till I'm a larger empire. Um, just so I can actually afford the larger armies they give you. Uh, you don't need to take humanist, administrative, eh, it's kind of nice if you're expansive. Don't take expansion or exploration, maritime is totally useless. Same thing with naval ideas. Aristocratic is debatable, it does get you an dis additional leader without upkeep and diplomat which is kind of nice plus the manpower absolutism it's not bad these days but eh. quality is debatable because the three ideas here for ships you don't need trade ideas can be good later on sadly despite the node being called the saxony trade node saxony doesn't have a center of trade or a trade node <laughs> bonus anywhere in its lands which sadly means even though you do have a fair amount of trade coming there you'll never be one of the larger trades to either take magburg or prague um, religious ideas i don't think it's good on saxony seeing as that you'll be tolerant of all christian religions and unless you're going off and fighting muslims you shouldn't have any religious issues innovative's good late day late gain espionage is pretty key and that pretty much covers the idea groups for them Essentially, that's it. Saxony. Saxony is kind of on the verge of being a unique nation or a minor nation in the HRE. It really depends how you play, but if you take a couple provinces, um, it's very possible just on your own um, to try and become emperor. You're a too small nation, but if you develop a fair amount and take another province or two, you'll become a large nation, making it much easier for you to be emperor. Other thing to note is when the Protestant Reformation happens and the HRE plunges into religious war. If you've gone diplomatic with the diplomatic reputation 
and you've developed your lands a fair amount, have a large army. If you convert to Protestant and join the uh, Protestant side of the religious leagues, the odds are you'll be placed as leader of the um, Protestant side, and seeing if you play diplomatic, you'll have good allies. Um, Saxony can come out of that war a lot stronger than most other nations going into it, because you can use that to take out some of your rivals' lands around you um, while you're fighting Austria. Plus, it gives you a chance to get allies in like De England, France, Castile, Russia. Even the Ottomans are alliable during that event. So that is pretty much it as a guide for Saxony. If anyone else has any recommendations or comments, feel free to leave them below. I'll try and answer them. If you have any other countries you want to, me to do a guide on, first check the list of countries I've done a guide on, which are most major countries in the game. Uh, if not, uh, feel free to leave a comment below, and I might do that. Otherwise, check out my Let's Plays for Europa, and uh, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time in another video. Bye for now.